Uh, call attention, please. Now, Sir Derek O'Brien to call the attention of the Minister. Sir, uh -huh. firstly, a uh, sincere thanks to the Chair for two things. Yes. One is for prioritizing and last week putting the agrarian crisis dis discussion up. First, before Let's having this calling attention on net neutrality, God, how it can we really thank you and appreciate the Chairman's no, gesture. It cannot be Sir, this one internet, question. this net neutrality no, no, don't is a complicated sounding subject, but let me start no, no, only by trying and simplifying it for those of us who are not so familiar with net neutrality. Or he called me, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Minister. Yeah, Minister. Yeah, and then he can. No, he, he, unless he is. You have to, you have to subject work, have raise no the subject. Minister will now yes, give the clarification. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> Honorable Deputy Chairman, sir, I am grateful to Honorable Member Derek O'Brien for calling the attention of the House to a very important matter. I will just read my statement. And thereafter, they will be raising their whole issues and contention yeah. and also their suggestions. Copy, copy. copy. Deputy Chairman, sir, let me copy, begin copy. by making a commitment and assurance to this Honorable House. Copy not available with the chair. One second. I'll just wait for two minutes, the copy. It yeah. is available in Hindi and English both. Sir, Okay. Should I yeah, proceed, please. Honorable Chairman, sir? Proceed. Honorable Deputy Chairman, sir, let me begin by making a commitment and assurance to this Honorable House and through the House of the People of India, this government is committed to the fundamental principles and concept of net neutrality. That is, keep the internet accessible and available to all without discrimination. Within 100 days of assumption of office, the government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi, initiated the program of Digital India in a mission mode designed to transform India into a digitally empowered society yes, and knowledge economy. Hello, hello. Digital India One, is designed to bridge the divide between digital haves and digital have-nots and reach digital connectivity to a billion citizens. Digital India has basically three components, creation of digital infrastructure as a utility for the citizens of India, delivery of digital delivery of services and see digital empowerment of citizens. Digital connectivity has emerged as a key driver of economic and social development in an increasingly knowledge-intensive global scenario in which India needs to play a leadership role. The program is designed to ensure that socio-economic scenario across India is transformed through accelerated, equitable and inclusive economic growth by laying a special emphasis on providing affordable and quality access to the broadband and internet in rural and remote areas. We are confident that sustained adoption of technology would offer viable options in overcoming developmental challenges in education, health, employment generation, financial inclusion, and a host of other services designed to make life more meaningful. We recognize that digital technology can afford means for millions of our citizens to improve their economic lives. The world has changed so much in a short time. Countries across the world have moved from an emphasis on physical connectivity to economic connectivity and lately to digital connectivity. At the heart of digital connectivity is the public internet, which has connected near and far, poor and rich alike. Internet is a new technology. Its protocols were written not more than 40 years ago. The public internet, the World Wide Web, is only 23 years of age. In this short span of time, it has come to occupy the center of the world. This has made possible by the open democratic structure of the public internet, equal and accessible to all those who are connected to the network. In India too, the new age economic growth is being fueled by internet. This government notes with confidence the growth of internet in India and wide platform it has offered for innovation, investment and creativity. In particular, the government complements the initiative and entrepreneurship of the young in making India a powerhouse in information technology and information technology enabled services. The studies by Indian Council for Research on or international economic relations show that every 10% increase of internet subscribers lead to 1.08 increase in our GDP. A similar study by the World Bank showed that for every 10% increase in broadband leads to 1.3% growth in national GDP. 
while it has significant microeconomic contribution towards growth, productivity, and employment, its empowering influence not only benefits large enterprise but also startups, entrepreneurs, and individual citizens. The internet has also emerged as a destination for public discourse. In a free, democratic country, the internet has increasingly become an important platform of information, dissemination, and exchange of opinion and views. Just as India values its constitutional guarantee of freedom of speech and expression, it also values an internet that is open. Discourse on internet on a variety of issues has led to the empowerment of the common man. While reiterating this government's commitment, the core principle of net neutrality, we must recognize that there are nuances to the issue which needs deliberation to make it more meaningful. If this had not been so, the issue of net neutrality would not have become an issue of debate and litigation across the world, even in the Western world, where the internet occupies a much more central role in the nation's economy and society. I have had occasion to study the debate on net neutrality in the United States of America from where internet originated. The Federal Communication Commission, the communication regulator in USA declared a set of regulations for an open internet in 2010. <coughs> These regulations were challenged in U.S. courts by internet service providers and were struck down on January, in January 2014. Thereafter, FCC came out with a consultation paper in May 2014 that asked for a response, amongst other questions, to a query as to whether paid prioritization that permits internet service providers to charge content providers to provide greater bandwidth for their end users should be followed. FCC was found by over 3 million males in response to the consultation paper. The recent FCC rules announced in February 2015 have been decided by a regulator with a slim 3-2 majority and have promptly been challenged in the U.S. Federal Court. As per media reports, the European Commission is meeting in early May to decide on whether over the top players who provide communication service over the Internet should be regulated. The debate in India has also gathered over the Suomoto consultation paper issued by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, which asked for response to a number of <coughs> questions concerning the regulation of OTT players. If the issue did not have nuances to it, why then would experts and regulators all over the world would be breaking their heads over it? It is therefore imperative that we not only preserve, but also foster non-discriminatory internet ecosystem, wherein telecom services providers content and application providers, industries, entrepreneurs, and above all, the citizens of the country have a stake. Government stands for ensuring non-discriminatory access to internet for all the citizens of the country. And current debate on net neutrality should be seen from this perspective while resolving the issue harmoniously and consistent with constitutional and economic principles. What is net neutrality? Professor Tim Wu, who coined the word net neutrality, stated, the network neutrality is best defined as a network design principle. The idea is that a maximally useful public information network aspires to treat all content sites and platform equally. This allows the network to carry every form of information and support every kind of application. Net neutrality thus refers to non-discrimination of data packets by intermediate networks of internet on the basis of content, application, service, device, sender or recipient addresses. Generally, it places the requirement on telecom service providers to treat all internet traffic on an equal basis. Net neutrality has many dimensions impacting economic, regulatory, and public policy aspects. Government agrees with the viewpoint that blocking and deliberate slowing down is speeding up of a lawful content on internet should not be allowed and customers should have unrestricted access to all lawful content on internet. There would be instances such as traffic management, national security, integrity of the network, investment infrastructure, ETC, where the implication of net neutrality would need detailed expert examination. This is what governments and regulators all over the world are grappling with. I am informed that very few countries have opted for a specific legislation for enforcement of net neutrality provisions. In a recently released report, 2014, Web Index, Web Foundation have found in a study across 86 countries that 74% of countries lack clear and effective net neutrality rules or show evidence of price discrimination. On the basis of measures undertaken to enforce net neutrality, nations can be broadly divided in three categories. Number one, countries with no specific measures undertaken 
as existing mechanism is often considered sufficient to address the issue. Examples, Australia, Republic of Korea, New Zealand. Two, countries with light-handed regulatory measures, that is transparency, lowering switching barriers, minimum quality of <coughs> services undertaken in these countries, example, European Commission, Japan, United Kingdom, etc. Three, countries with specific legislative measures undertaken, being undertaken in these countries to enforce no blocking, no discrimination in treatment of traffic. But most of these provisions are not absolute, but subject to reasonable network management and other exemptions. Example, Brazil, Chile, Netherlands, USA, etc. As per the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, TRI makes recommendations to government on regulating various aspects of telecom sector through a transparent, open public consultation process. TRI has issued a Suomoto consultation paper, regulatory framework for over the top services on 27 3 2015. While TRI has the power to regulate traffic and quality of service, its regulations are subject to overall policy, public policy of the government. On other issues, TRI can make recommendations and final decision rests with the government. Even on tariff and quality of service regulations, these have to be in accordance with and consistent with the public policy, and the government has sufficient power under the TRI Act to invoke its national policy objectives to give direction to TRI. The government has also separately constituted a committee with a mandate to recommend overall policy and technical responses to net neutrality. The committee has already held stakeholder consultations with over the top players, telecom service providers, internet service providers, civil society members, consumer groups, multi-stakeholder advisory group of the Department of Electronics and Information Technology and various association industry bodies. The committee is expected to submit its report recommendation by the, this month then. The government will then make a structured view on the way forward. I assure this House the key principles of net neutrality will be followed while addressing concerns with the national outlook. Sir, this is my very comprehensive statement yeah, on an issue of great importance. Very I thank you, Mr. O'Brien, Honorable Member, for initiating it. Yeah, yeah. Sir, let me conclude by saying just two quick things. Internet is one of the finest creations of human mind. It must belong to the mankind, not to few. The first yeah, thing I have to that's say. Very clear. The second point, I salute the young people of India for the manner in which they have brought India on the international stage by the huge spread of internet. Sir, I'm happy to inform the House that in India we have got 97.5 crore mobile phones in India. And we have got 30 crore internet connection in India. And our aim is, very soon in two years' time, we will have 50 crore, that means 500 million internet connections in India. And very soon, we will have 1 billion mobile phones in India in a population of 1.25. This is spread of information is truly extraordinary. And internet to become global must have a linkage with the local in culture, in content, and ideas. That the larger view, it should, be, it should be without discrimination. But what I am keenly looking forward in this August House is to have their ideas, their suggestions, so that we can take a structured view. And sir, I want to assure the House very clearly and categorically that whatever be the consultation paper, the decision will be taken by the government, by the cabinet, consistent with the aspiration and hope of the people of India. That's all I have to Very say. Very clear. So, Mr. Derek O'Brien, now see, <clears throat> the total time allotted is one hour. I have 16 uh, name, additional names for clarification. So, Derek will take five minutes. Others will take two minutes each for clarification. Everybody two minutes. No new name will come. Whatever is here. So, if your name is there, I will... Eh? <laughs> yes. He has already said he is neutral. Then, <laughs> okay. Derek, please. Time, time, time. Derek. Sir. Derek, please. The minister, I thank. Firstly, I thank him for sharing the optimism which we've always had. I want to make a few specific points on this note, and then I've got some specific queries. It's a four-page note, sir. The first two pages, with all the enthusiasm shared by the minister, sounded like a Wikipedia Wikipedia entry on, on the internet, if you key in the words internet or if you key in the words digital India, all very nice, all very highfalutin, all very poetical, but today's discussion I want to keep on the facts, so I'm not, going to, I'm not going to comment on the first two pages, but that doesn't matter, I think, let's get to the meat of the matter. The meat of the matter first is, 
Let us try and explain to people who don't know this. They think this internet is one complicated thing from outer space. What is the issue? The issue is, it's like electricity. What, what is the debate today? Electricity is being supplied to your home. You're paying 1,500 rupees. Now the electricity supplier is telling you, I suggested, is that if you use your fridge and your microwave, and if it's Samsung, you have to pay a little more. If you use your fan and your tube light, you'll pay a little less. If you're using a washing machine, which is of a particular brand, you'll have to pay a little less. This is the basic concept as explained to the layman. I wish the government in the last two months had taken some trouble or just stay in this jargon of net neutrality. And they've continued with the jargon through the statement. My specific questions, specific. One, try. Try was constituted a consultation paper on March the 27th. The tone of the consultation paper, if anyone has read it in this house, it sounds like a consultation paper dictated by a telecom major. Now, I don't want to guess which telecom major, but it sounded like that. Number two, the, cons the consultation paper of TRI is blatantly in favor, not of the consumer. You've given us the thing about the youth of the country, etc., etc., but it's not in favor of the youth or the internet user, it's in favor of TRI. Uh, it's in favor of telecom. The last one, what woke you up? BJP are very good in the trolls, you know, vote for this, do for that, but this time it's the net which woke you up. Because there was a hashtag running there called net neutrality. Emails were sent, and this is the danger. Emails were sent to try. How many emails? 10 lakh emails. 1 million emails. Now that's a small number you may say because there are so many people in the country. 1 lakh emails. The whole internet was uh, very, very angry. Your youth, etc. So much so, I won't reveal the gentleman's name. But a senior BJP leader told me, we created this Twitter and social media army, very good, but now we can't control the social media army. So it's come back like the Australian boomerang. Now what happened was very dangerous. Sir, and this is a cause of serious concern, beyond even net neutrality. That, and I say this with all responsibility. Those 10 lakh people, young people, executives, people working, professionals, their 10 lakh emails were leaked. They were put up on the TRI website for one and a half days. My specific question to the minister, why have you compromised the privacy of these 10 lakh individuals? It's a very serious issue. By putting it up for 36 hours and then quietly putting it down, sir, this is a very dangerous trend because you're going to target these people after this. And in my, I've got three questions to you, sir, specific questions. One of, I think you've answered. You have said, what is the gov I have asked you, what is the government stand on net neutrality? On page three, you have, get a, you have written three bold lines there. If, you if I take that as the answer, that would be acceptable if this is your stand. Make it clear, sir, on the floor of the house. Number two, which is the larger question, is the government considering amending the IT Act? If yes, yes. If no, why not? whether the government is considering regulating the internet in a good way, because like electricity, are you considering internet being for public good? And I've got three suggestions, sir, very quickly. We need to create rules, but I'm sure you will agree, we also agree we need to create rules. Do you intend to make the internet into a license Raj? My last two, sir, you said you've listened to all the stakeholders. I'm happy that the chairman brought this subject up. And I'm even happier he brought this up before agrarian crisis came before this. Otherwise, we tend to get carried away and we think net neutrality is the end of the world. No, agrarian crisis is 100 times more important than net neutrality. So on this, sir, on this uh, freedom of speech debate, you have said it in your reply. I'll accept it in the spirit. Talk to everybody, sir. You've got a strong message on, this, on the users of the social media. Those are the people you talk to. And, sir, the last point, sir, will the minister give an assurance to Parliament that no action will be taken, try or otherwise, without taking Parliament into confidence. Okay, thank, thank you. you sir. Thank you very much. Sridhi Raja? No? Dr. Ashok Ganguly? Two minutes only. Put the question in two minutes. I just want to compliment the Minister for the statement he has made. But do not underestimate 
the U.S. has resolved to dominate this area specifically after the leakage of the slowdown. It will have access to global net and the privacy and secrecy of our defense services, our private citizen is going to be challenged. How are you going to avoid that? The, U the European Union's battle against Google right now is of great relevance to India because what it is forcing Google to do is to become net neutral. And that, is, that must be followed very closely. There is a hidden agenda of the service providers. It is like the water suppliers, Honorable Minister, who say that when we supply you water, we will make a distinction between the price of water used for, say, drinking or used in the toilet. It's a very serious issue. We have to simplify it to this level because the ability of the service providers is beyond our comprehension. The TRAI must make its intention clear and once the Honorable Minister is clear about what is going to be done, I repeat what Mr. Derek O'Brien has said, kindly bring it back to the floor of this house because the net is going to be the principal instrument for fighting poverty, for maintaining privacy. And when those one billion people have the net in their hands, they must have the freedom as Indian citizens, not subservient to any service provider or international innovators. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Srimadhi Kanimuri. Only two minutes, put the question, that's all. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the net is, internet is going to redefine our future and create a wide array of economic opportunities for the uh, younger generation. We must take care and make sure that these opportunities are for everyone and not for a select few. That is why it is important that the principle of net neutrality is developed and upheld by our government. So I, uh, I like to give an example which I read on the internet uh, when this issue had come up. And uh, such an interesting thing can only be said by youngsters on the net. Uh, when this problem came up, they described it as going into Disneyland, paying an entrance fee, and going into the Disneyland and paying separate fees for every ride. And all the rides which are actually sought, more sought after, you pay for it. And there are a few free rides also. So this is how uh, beautifully they are able to express themselves in the net. And we should take care that nothing stops this, nothing changes this. And we've always been wondering whether the younger generation is concerned about social issues, concerned about issues which affect them, affect us as a country. And uh, when this issue came up, we can clearly see how the younger generation specifically of this country came together and fought against this, you know, as a whole. And uh, social media sites have been buzzing with activity to save the net. And this activism is very important and it has to, it's been a first step and it has to spread to other uh, thing, issues also. So i like to just have a few, a few clarifications and I thank the minister for his uh, um, statement here and he's reiterated many times in his statement that uh, net neutrality, they will make sure that there is net neutrality. Now put your question. Yes. What are the steps being taken to address the concerns raised by small websites that they would not yeah. be able to compete with the powerful websites who are joining hands with the in internet so service providers? Sir, and uh, in uh, his statement, the DMK treasurer, Mr. Stalin, has declared that the internet should become a civic right like others. Does the government have any proposal to make internet civic a civic right which can be addressed by one and all. Okay. And according to media reports, Tri was supposed to hold discussions with multi-shareholder advisory group on this topic. What are the outcomes of this discussion? Okay. And the government should make sure that all its websites, I mean, they are, but uh, the government uh, websites and government portals should be uh, free online. And this will show that the government is serious about e-governance. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
Sri Rita Brata Banardi. Now, put your question in two minutes. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I am a last bencher. We get very few opportunities. I just crave your indulgence. Maybe half a minute more. Not more than that. No, no, only two minutes for everybody. Sir, uh, we strongly criticize the so-called consultation document actually published by the TRI, a document that supports the interests of telecom companies and internet monopolies against the people. And we also support this ongoing struggle for net neutrality. Now, the internet, uh, there is a continuous demand that it must be declared as a public utility because internet, this is a source of knowledge, means of communication, and this is a vehicle for all forms of media. Now, interestingly, a number of telecom companies such as Airtel and Reliance along with some internet companies are offering special packages. They bundle only a few websites and applications with their services, pretending that this limited internet is the whole internet. This is a dangerous thing because such cartels between the telecom companies and the few global internet monopolies will lead to further concentration of economic power in the internet. Now, my specific question is this telecom companies are continuously arguing that they need more money to build infrastructure and meet the demand of the new internet based services. Hence they claim they need to violate net neutrality. What the telecom companies do not disclose, that the revenues from the data services they are earning, there is a 100% in 2004. Every quarter this is leaping up. This Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, these are fueling the revenues. And the, what the telecom companies are asking therefore is to be paid twice. We the users will pay once and they will also want the internet companies to pay them more money. So I will urge upon the government that this thing needs to be looked upon. And, in, and one point I just want to make, that today incidentally is 5th of May, 197 years ago on this very day, Karl Marx was born. World's greatest philosopher had one po once pointed out that the ideas of the ruling class in every epoch are the ruling ideas. Not only this, the class which has at its disposal, the means of material production also in trance control the means of mental production. Today this ongoing struggle for net neutrality has, is proving this once again. I will urge upon the government once again, particularly this point of this telecom companies, point of uh, they want to be paid twice, that needs to be looked upon. Thank you, sir. Okay, you are very clever. You brought marks also in the discussion. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sri Vivek Gupta. <laughs> Put your I, question two minutes. Yes, sir. Sir, I have already raised the zero hour of this last week. And, uh, uh, you know, I just do not want to repeat whatever has been said. But, sir, as India is growing, uh, you know, more, more uh, villages are getting electricity, more. So there is a situation happening that uh, there are a lot of places where single operators are only there providing net. Con and sir, if these people are allowed to exploit, so that will become a very, very difficult and a dangerous situation. Sir, also I would like to know from the Honorable Minister through you, sir, the government itself is an interested party because these telecom operators share a part of their revenue with the government. So it is in the government, government on the, how does the government plan to balance this one uh, increase, potential of increased revenue coming through non-net neutrality and uh, protecting the freedom of expression. So my second question to you, to the Honorable Minister is, how will uh, a level playing field be provided to small business and startup businesses who, survive, who use the internet and e-commerce to further their growth and to uh, try and compete with the big giants of the world? So Facebook and some other companies have in fact made uh, voluntary gestures for going for net neutrality. Sir, if the biggies don't want it, sir, I do fail to understand why the try is over enthusiastic in first disclosing all 10, uh, 10 lakh email and uh, putting all these people at risk and so siding with these operators. Sir, I want an uh, inquiry through you to go behind who is behind this uh, concept in India, who is trying to instigate it, because the government says we, they, are, they don't want it, the consumers don't want it, the internet uh, biggies, the Facebooks, are the, they don't want it. Sir, who wants it? I just want an answer from you. Thank okay, you, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, Sir Tarun Vijay. Net neutrality ka issue utha rahe hain aur kehte hain ki 30 crore log Bharat mein iska istemal karte hain. उनको ये बात समझनी चाहिए कि नेट न्यूट्रलिटी जैसा भारी भरकम शब्द न इस्तेमाल करके सीधे सीधे इसे इंटरनेट की आजादी से जोड़ा जाए एक अगर आजादी की लड़ाई थी संविधान की लड़ाई थी उसी तरह से इंटरनेट भी हमारी अभिव्यक्ति की स्वतंत्रता की आजादी की लड़ाई है और आम आदमी उससे वैसा ही जुड़ा है जैसे गांधी के नमक सत्याग्रह से जुड़ा था यह मजाक यह हल्कापन छोड़ दीजिए और अंग्रेजी के बजाय जो भारतीय भाषाओं में बड़ी संख्या में करोड़ों की संख्या में नेट का इस्तेमाल करने वाले लोग हैं उनको वापस आप टेलीकॉम की गुलामी में मत झोंकिए 
एक आजादी हुई थी हमारी अंग्रेजों से और दूसरी गुलामी इससे हमें बचना है जो टेलीकॉम की गुलामी है और इसलिए मैं ये कहना चाहता हूं कि सरकार ये सुनिश्चित करे कि ई मेलिंग को वह ब्लैक मेलिंग में तब्दील ना होने दे आज हम ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में जाते हैं आज लैंड का इस्तेमाल करते हैं जमीन का इस्तेमाल करते हैं पानी का सर्वे करते हैं बच्चों की शिक्षा करते हैं और हिंदुस्तान का कोई ऐसा क्षेत्र नहीं है जहां इंटरनेट के बिना काम आ, होता हो उसको शिकंजे में कसना वापस सामान्य जन के सिविल राइट्स को एक गुलामी के उसमें लेना और ये जो टेलीकॉम कंपनियां हैं ये शाइलॉक हैं ये लोग शार्क हैं और अपने फेल्योर के लिए ये जनता को पनिश करना चाहते हैं इनकी वैल्यू एडेड जो फ्रॉड होता है बिना सब्सक्राइब के जो हमको हर महीने बिल देते हैं वोडाफोन कंपनी ने अभी मेरे बिल से दस हजार रुपए काटे कम किए दो साल से वे ले रहे थे कि मैं ब्लैकबेरी यूज कर रहा हूं और उसका किराया ले रहे थे जो मैंने देखा नहीं झूठा जालसाजी भरा और एक स्कैंडलस वो ओवर बिलिंग करते हैं और उसके बाद कहते हैं कि आपको घाटा हो रहा है सर मैं केवल सरकार से जानना चाहता हूं प्रश्न पूछिए रविशंकर जी आप ये मत कहिए कि दुनिया के छियासी देशों में चौहत्तर में कोई क्लियर और अफेक्टिव नेट न्यूट्रलिटी बिल नहीं है अरे नहीं है तो नहीं है लेट इंडिया लीड द वर्ल्ड इन मेकिंग अ लेजिस्लेशन फॉर एंश्योरिंग नेट न्यूट्रलिटी आई विल अर्ज द गवर्नमेंट टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ इंटरनेट बिल ऑफ सिविल राइट ओके और ताकि नेट न्यूट्रलिटी में सिविल राइट हमारे मजबूत हो सके और ये बहुत जरूरी है दूसरे देशों की और हम ना देखे ये गांधी का दूसरा नमक सत्याग्रह है और सरकार इसका समर्थन करे श्री प्रोफेसर रणबीर राजीव गौडा क्वेश्चन दो मिनट में इन टू मिनट फुट द क्वेश्चन श्योर सर सर इन फेब्रुवरी सिक्सटी नाइन ईयर ओल्ड फार्मर फ्रॉम नॉर्थ कर्नाटका participated in a pre budget discussion with our chief minister sidramaiah he suggested to the cm that crop insurance claims could be settled promptly without corruption if the government made use of google earth to map the coordinates of the land and used whatsapp to transmit transmit pictures of the crop damage that is just part of the wisdom coming from an earthy young uh, earthy old man talking about the potential of internet and its transformational potential sir so if we want to make use of this transformational potential we have to create a net neutrality in a way to ensure net neutrality sir so i have had the chance to participate in using technology before the internet was born i have seen how private networks have fallen aside and open networks have flourished and crowdsourcing has been possible how mainstream media which is in the hands of the corporate sector has been bypassed by free open social media which has even ushered in revolutions like the arab spring so net neutrality will ensure that newer apps and technologies will emerge that will help in the words of star trek people to go boldly go where no man has ever gone before we should not find any way to slow down this extraordinary unleashing of the power of human ingenuity so telecom providers have been licensed to carry traffic it does not matter whether that traffic is a film or a song or a voice a message or even a digital message data sir. essentially they are being paid for that platform access and uh, they should not slow down these bits and bytes through subtle methods of slowing down or pro uh, discriminatory access only then can we at india achieve its demographic dividend sir if we create a net neutral platform that will allow online education mobile commerce all kinds of other innovations to uh, to to flourish going forward sir so my question to the minister while i'm happy with his commitment to net neutrality what about the independence of trai if he is saying that the regulatory authority does not matter or every decision is going to be overruled by the ministry on the grounds of public policy you didn't Please. say like that You that is the implication that. of his statement please sir pay attention to the exact uh, details of what he said he said whatever tra says we will do it on he the basis of public policy, public policy it's our responsibility i want the independence of regulatory authorities also to be maintained okay, question, okay. how will the minister ensure that thank you very much sri rajiv chandrasekhar rajiv chandrasekhar oh, sir thank you put sir. your question in 2 minutes sir i thank the minister for his statement sir Uh, I echo what uh, Derek said, sir. That net neutrality is not a very complex or philosophical statement. It is, at its heart, a very simple but vital issue of protecting consumer interest and protecting them from uh, telecom companies that want to be gatekeepers of the internet. Sir, to him, the simple message from the netizens is this: 
that the internet must remain accessible, fair and open, and the consumers will oppose any move by telecom access providers to carve up the internet into islands based on commercial contracts in an attempt to what I refer to as cableization of the internet. Sir, I have four questions for the minister, sir. He referred to this 74% of the countries not having legislation. I would point out to him, sir, that the legislation today vis-a-vis -vis consumer rights and interest in telecom are very, very weak. So please do not use that as an example to not legislate net neutrality. We must get legislation for net neutrality and please assure us that there will be explicit legislation and rules for the same. Second, sir, is the important issue of the conduct of the TRAI. I have repeatedly raised in this house the need to review the independent regulator. What is the minister going to do in the face of this terrible behavior and conduct of the TRAI in this consultation? Will he do a comprehensive review of the TRAI, the TRAI Act, specifically about sections in the Act that deal with consumer protection and consumer interest? So third, the TRAI chairman has raised this issue that there is a corporate rivalry that has led to this issue of net neutrality debate. It is a deliberate distraction from the fact. I must request the minister to direct the TRAI to disclose any evidence that they have on corporate rivalry that has led to this net neutrality discussion. It is the right of parliament to know and it is the right of people to know, especially when people are trying to distract away from a real important debate. Sir, fourth, I want the minister to assure the house that consumers cannot, will not, should not and cannot be, again I'm saying cannot, guarantors of the business plan of telcos, nor is it the government's job to protect these companies from technological disruptions that are the new normal in the sector, sir. I, ex I expect four assurances from the minister, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Sri Anta Bhaskar Rapalu, put your question in two minutes. Mani Upasabhapati Mahodai, Vishwayapt Vartalap Madhyam ke upar, uski apatiyon ke upar, ये सदन की ध्यान आकर्षण करने के लिए सावधान आकर्षण करने के लिए ये प्रस्ताव के तरफ मंत्री जी का जो समाधान था वो अर्ध सत्य है एंड दी लास्ट वीक इन द अदर हाउस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट व्हेन माय लीडर टुक अप द कॉज ऑफ द नेट न्यूट्रलिटी द होप्स ऑफ द इंडियन नेटिजेंस हैव रेज्ड हानेड सर Net neutrality is a gentleman agreement. Net neutrality is world web norm. Net neutrality is a level playing field. At the same time, net neutrality is yet to attain the global legality. That is why the complications are growing. The world websites, the websites are the hidden treasures the riches and the resources on the platforms of the Google, Twitter, Facebook and all other social media has creating envy and also enlarging the complications. At this, the internet service provider's role has changed. By 2013, among the world net population, India attained the third largest position. And now we are leading and guiding, but with this net neutrality and the coming complications of the decade, it throws us a challenge on the usage of spectrum, not only the usage of spectrum, but also the undersea cables. Now put By your six years, put your question. there will be pressure Rafa, on no, the put your cables, internet cables. No, no, yes, your term is I am coming lost. to that. Put your question. On the no, internet no. cables. The pressure is going to grow and internet is going to collapse. What are the union government measures in that direction to enable the safe internet which has become the principal utilize, utilization platform for the delivery of administration and the development of the welfare. And at the same time, your answer has again given us tension that try to try your intentions are dubious. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Sri Yeh, you sing there. Uh, thank you yes, much, sir. Within two minutes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, completely here with uh, uh, Mr. O'Brien and uh, Chandrasekharji and what they have said. See, the concept of neutral 
publicly accessible information and transfer of that information has been around since the days of Alexander Graham Bell. Basic public yeah, infrastructure such as subways, buses, telephones, companies, etc. are not allowed to discriminate, restrict or differentiate common access. Yes, no. And this is the core concept no. behind net no. neutrality no. as well. No. In countries no. such as United no. States, this no. has been a topic of much contention and telecom no. companies no. have attempted no. to regulate free internet usage, but they fail to uh, do to massive public response against it. Now, breach of net neutrality is illegal in the state, in the United States of America. The vested interest of telecos is, telecos is pushing the government to consider breaching the principle of net neutrality. That is the free and fair non-discriminatory usage of internet. Such should we, uh, should we not have the freedom to decide what websites to access and the speeds at which to access them at standard cost without telecom companies imposing, imposing upon us. Why should an ASL or a Vodafone be able to choose whether I use Google or Bing or any other search engine? Why should I be forced to make a choice between using or Skype or Viber? So my understanding of net neutrality tells me that if the change in regulation goes through, telcos would tie up with certain applications in exchange for a price and provide free access only to those applications, whereas in the event uh, that I want to use certain other apps. I would have to pay a separate price for it. Sir, my question here is uh, the, uh, to the Honourable Minister, sir, the net neutrality is, is central to the Prime Minister's vision of digital India. The Honourable Prime Minister has envisaged a digital India and that thought, that vision has been lauded not just in our country but all over the globe. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who visited India last year, not only complimented such question. a move, but also spoke about how he plans to get millions of Indians online. Please put I would question. like to ask the PM, how can this be possible when the free usage of internet is under threat and the conditions are raised by, as uh, okay. uh, questions by Sri Chandrasekhar Ji and Sri Dera Kutbha. Okay, thank you. Sri Devi Verma, two minutes may question puchiye. Sir, I have used in the Hindustan और नगरीय और गरीब क्षेत्रों में ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में भी बराबर बढ़ रहा है सर जब जो सरकारी ऑपरेटर हैं उसके माध्यम से ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में सर्विसेज अवेलेबल हैं लेकिन आज मजबूरी यह हो गई है कि नेट की सर्विसेज और जो वैल्यू एडेड जो को सर्विसेज हैं उसके लिए ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में भी लोगों को बीएसएनएल के अलावा दूसरे ऑपरेटर्स के सिम लेकेज का काम करने पड़ रहे हैं अलग कई एक मोबाइल रखने पड़ रहे हैं मुझे लगता है कि ट्राई की जानकारी में सब कुछ है लेकिन आज सवाल ट्राई के ऊपर है कि जब ट्राई इस बात को जानती है कि हिंदुस्तानियों को इस तरीके से ठगा जा रहा है तो ट्राई करती क्या रही आज की तारीख तक और ट्राई देख तो सरकार को रही है लेकिन ऑपरेट हो रही है प्राइवेट ऑपरेटर्स के द्वारा कहीं ना कहीं से उनके इंटरेस्ट डिफेंड कर रही तो मैं माननीय मंत्री से सवाल करना चाहता हूं कि ट्राई का जो ये बिहेवियर है उसको कैसे रेगुलेट करेंगे और जो नुकसान ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में लोगों लोगों का हुआ है उसे कैसे कॉम्पेंसेट करेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच श्री शांता राम नायक थैंक यू रेवर मा फॉर ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर गवर्नमेंट स्टैंड फॉर इंश्योरिंग नॉन डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी एक्सेस टू इंटरनेशनल internet for all citizens of the country and current debate on net neutrality should be seen from this perspective while resolving the issues harmoniously and consistent with constitutional and economic principles. You have used very high language and broad principle. I hope we can stick to this in future when time comes. You have also further said government agrees with the viewpoint that blocking and deliberate slowing down speeding up of lawful content on internet should not be allowed. I think you will in the course of time be able to define the lawful content because ultimately a lot of controversies have arisen because of this, these wordings. So kindly sing. And my questions to you, specific questions are, will you enact a legislation on net neutrality because many countries so far have opted not to have any legislation. What is the rationale of those countries who have opted not to have a law in the matter? Have you contacted any of these countries or the governments to know their mind on this subject? Thank you, Mr. Nayak. Thank you. Yes, Sri Anil Desai, put the question in less than two minutes. The potential of uh, internet and its usefulness has been stressed by every speaker who spoke on this very important subject. I'm of the same opinion that net neutrality has to be there. If it is not there, it will mean internet service providers will be able to charge companies like YouTube or 
uh, Netflix as they consume more bandwidth and eventually the load of extra sum will be pushed to the consumers. Similarly, ISPs can then create slow as well as fast internet lines which will mean websites cannot be accessed at the same speed at one, could, one can do so only on paying additional sum. For instance, you have a standard data package as of now and access all the content at the same speed irrespective of whether it is an international website or desi. Similarly, ISPs can, internet service providers can also charge extra for the free calls you make using services like WhatsApp, Skype and others and eventually the load of additional pay, payable sum by the over the top players will be pushed on to the consumers. Net neutrality is extremely important for small business owners, startups and entrepreneurs who can simply launch their business businesses online, advertise the products and sell them openly without any discrimination. So I would like to ask the minister that by bringing in the legislation on net, uh, net neutrality, uh, what time uh, it would be uh, coming to the house or why, what time the legislation would be uh, brought to the house so that anxieties of the all netizens would be put to rest. Thank you very much. Sri Narendra Kumar Kashyap. Sir, Sir question. Ah. Manya Matri ji ne net ke baare mein, net ke vikas ke baare mein jo baate rakhi hai, sadhan aur desh, dono aapke saath sahamat hai. और हम इस बात को भी महसूस करते हैं कि इसके विस्तार और सुधार की और भी कुछ आवश्यकताएं हैं मैं केवल दो बातें माननीय मंत्री से जानना चाहता हूं कि इंटरनेट के यूज के लिए बेहतर नेटवर्क की जरूरत पड़ती है और हमारा देश चाहे ग्रामीण आंचल में बसता हो या शहरी आंचल में बसता हो माननीय मंत्री जी आपकी जानकारी में यह चीज होनी चाहिए कि हमारे देश में बीएसएनएल एमटीएनएल गवर्नमेंट की संस्थाओं का वो नेटवर्क है जो देश में प्रॉपर्ली अभी तक उपलब्ध नहीं हो पा रहा मैं पूरे देश की बात भी ना करूं एक सांसद होने के नाते अगर मैं अपनी बात आपसे कहूं तो आपको जान के हैरत होगा कि जो मोबाइल जनहित के प्रयोग के लिए हमको उपलब्ध कराए गए गाजियाबाद में मेरा आवास है राजनगर सेक्टर 23 में मेरे मकान पर कभी भी मेरे मोबाइल का प्रयोग नहीं हो सकता और प्रयोग इसलिए नहीं हो सकता क्योंकि वहां पे आपका नेटवर्क ही नहीं है वहां पे सिग्नल होता ही नहीं है हम इंटरनेट के विकास की बात कर रहे हैं अस्सी करोड़ से ज्यादा लोग मोबाइल यूज कर रहे हैं तमाम चीजें हैं लेकिन सरकार की प्राथमिकता में यह भी आना चाहिए कि अगर इंटरनेट का प्रयोग तो तब हम कर पाएंगे जब हमारे पास अच्छा नेटवर्क होगा तो क्या माननीय मंत्री जी बीएसएनएल एमटीएनएल नेटवर्क को हर जगह उपलब्ध कराने का कोई प्लान कोई रूपरेखा सदन में स्पष्ट करेंगे मानवर और दूसरी बात के, के बाद समाप्त कर दूंगा अभी एक मिनट हुई है दूसरा आज फेसबुक और व्हाट्सएप पर इंटरनेट पर जो कुछ हो रहा है वो भी देश और दुनिया जान पा रही है यह बात सही है कि युवा भी उद्योगपति भी पॉलिटिशियंस भी आम आदमी भी किसान भी सबको इंटरनेट का फेसबुक का व्हाट्सएप का लाभ मिल रहा है मिलना चाहिए इससे भी हम लोग सहमत हैं लेकिन कभी कभी इसके अपवाद पर भी चिंता करनी चाहिए मंत्री जी आज फेसबुक पे आज व्हाट्सएप पे आज इंटरनेट पे लेडीज की जेंट्स की नंगी फोटो गालियां अब शब्द बुरे संदेश बड़े पैमाने पर चलते हैं हम अभी भी आपको मोबाइल में दिखा सकते हैं तो ये 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 जो एक बीमारी भारत की संस्कृति को समाप्त करने की शुरू हो गई है भारत की सत्ता को बिगाड़ने के लिए शुरू हो गई है तो क्या नेटवर्क इंटरनेट के जरिए फेसबुक के जरिए या जो भी और चीजें इस तरह से देश में okay. आ रही है क्या माननीय मंत्री जी ऐसा कोई ठोस कानून बनाएंगे कि जिस कानून के जरिए कम से कम इंटरनेट पर फेसबुक पर या व्हाट्सएप पर यह गंदे संदेश okay. और संस्कृति को मिटाने वाली चीजें उपलब्ध ना हो okay. कृपया दोनों बातों पर आपका ध्यान दिलाना चाहता हूं धन्यवाद okay. धन्यवाद
Sri Navanit Krishnan. Sir, thank you, Honorable Amma. I thank Honorable uh, Minister for Communication and Information Technology, Sri Ravi Sankar Prasadji. The entire world become a global village only because of internet. I humbly submit, net neutrality is a fundamental right under Article 21 of our Constitution, that is right to life, and also a, and also a fundamental right under Article 19.1a of the Constitution, that is right to expression. So without net neutrality, our life become meaningless. Therefore, ADMK, headed by Honorable Amma, mm. firmly supports the concept of net neutrality and is against any attempt by corporate interest to restrict the internet. The central government should take a firm stand and continue to safeguard the interest of net users by maintaining absolute net, in, net neutrality. My question is, while the government is firm to maintain the net neutrality, how the corporates are proposing to charge extra, extra for use of WhatsApp, Skype, and Viper, etc., and other applications. So the government, the central government must be very firm in its stand, and the, car the corporate should not be allowed to exploit the poor netizens of India. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Sri KTS Tulsi. Sri KTS Tulsi. Thank you, sir. All that I want to focus on is that legislative measures will have to be adopted for protection of the integrity of data and also for ensuring privacy. Because if privacy is compromised, like the instance which Mr. Derek O'Brien gave, where the identity of 10 lakh people who sent the emails was compromised, if that kind of a thing continues to happen, one can dread to think because most of the crime these days is linked to internet misuse of internet but to whatever extent we can through legislative process at least protect the privacy and integrity of data that's going to be most critical for the growth of this sector and i think in, since india is an it superpower therefore we must take the lead in evolving a proper legislation to regulate the rights of the consumers. C 36A is a Supreme Court has already <laughs> rejected. That 66A. Ah, that is gone. Already now Sri D Raja. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Protecting net neutrality is the responsibility of the government. Failure to do so would mean allowing the corporate censorship. Corporate ISPs should not have control over what websites will be available to the consumers. And corporate ISPs should not be allowed to differentiate in terms of speed for different websites. Sir, various nations across the world over the last few months brought in legislations to protect net neutrality. Now it is essential for our government also to wake up to the necessity to protect freedom of choice for consumers, number one, and ens to ensure level playing field for all web companies. Sir, I ask the government whether government will evolve a comprehensive policy, a stated policy on net neutrality. Whether the government will ban certain corporate companies which are against the spirit of neutrality. If not, why? If not, why? Government should answer. Sir, nations like Germany have laws promoting open source softwares in education, government departments and defense. This will not only save millions of 
foreign exchange, but also critical for defense of the nation. What is the thinking of the government? Sir, finally, I am not quoting Karl Marx, but definitely I quote Dr. Ambedkar. When you talk of consistent with constitutional and economic principles, it is Dr. Ambedkar who said in the constitution, state should ensure all means of production to the common good of this society. Okay. Whether you will ensure that. Sir, we wish you better not put the question, that's all. Very good. A very small specific question. The, it's the responsibility of the tribe to have net neutral, neutrality and the independence of the net. Now, if that is there, I am surprised why the try itself has been, it's a, there's an air of skepticism from the try itself and they are saying that it is because, not us, but because of the rivalry and the competition of the corporates that this has cropped in. I want to ask the minister that is it not their responsibility, they should have cleared the air and why has it cropped up? Thank you. Now, Honorable Minister. Sir, I am very grateful for a very eloquent, thought-provoking exchange of ideas, starting with my esteemed colleague, Honorable Member Derek O'Brien, ending with Raja, another senior Honorable colleague and VP Singh. I thank Don't all put the Raja at the last. Huh? Raja should be at the first. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I thank all the members. I don't want to take the long names because... But one, sir, one thing has surprised me, sir. हर विषय पर माननीय त्यागी जी के विचार ऊर्जावान सुनने को मिलते हैं और इतने महत्वपूर्ण विषय पर उनकी खामोशी ने मुझे बहुत हरत में डाला है चलिए आगे कभी फिर उनके विचार को सुनने का अवसर हमें मिलेगा ऐसा हमें लगता है सर सर ए लॉट ऑफ डिबेट range around the concept of net neutrality. I don't think we need to debate that at all. It is very clear. My idea being conveyed to the internet must go in an unhindered manner. Very simply, I need not pay more about it and the companies should not charge more about it. That's a very simple idea what net neutrality is about. But what is a matter of great assurance for me today, Honorable Deputy Chairman, that today the entire House spoke in one voice. And the quality of debate shows the entire depth of our House. Sir, this always, this expression I have used in some other context, I want to use it here also. What is the hallmark of our House, Raj Sabha? Substance without flamboyance. And that I saw it here especially in abundance. Today. Especially, uh, especially today. Especially today. All the members rose to great heights in the larger cause of net neutrality. And sir, I want to give a very strong support to Tarun Vijay Ji. For the freedom of the net, there is no need to do anything for the freedom of the net. No, please. 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 मेरा वक्तव्य भी बहुत स्पष्ट था उसके बारे में अब आपको तो बोलने का अवसर था आपने बोला नहीं तो आप शांत रहिए सर आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू सी द काइंड वर्ड्स यूज बाय माय गुड फ्रेंड मिस्टर ओब्रेन डेरिक ओब्रेन अबाउट मी टुडे दो इट केम विद लॉट ऑफ केवियर्स नो प्रॉब्लम सर आई वांट टू अश्योर दिस हाउस द डिजिटल इंडिया इज नॉट ए प्रोग्राम ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डिजिटल इंडिया इज ए प्रोग्राम which we owe to the future generations of India to bridge the divide between digital haves and digital have-nots. It is a program where Bengal government and government of India, UP government and government of India have to work together. And my idea, sir, sometime a debate will come. I'll answer this whole. I would like to have a debate on digital India at one point in time. My idea of digital India is that a mason, a carpenter, an electrician, a other lowly paid people using their smartphone in quest of their jobs and getting empowered. 
that work has started in India today. Therefore, this is something we owe to the people of India. And connectivity is an important part of that. And this connectivity should become available. Manya Kashyap ji, kabhi BSL par chalcha ho gi, aapne kaha, Gaziabad ke baare mein bataya, mein usko dekhoon ga. Mujhe ma... Jara, mein aapne... Ek, 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 usne baat kahi, mein vistar se charcha karoon ga, BSL mein pichle 10 saal mein kya kya kamzori aai hai, mein itna hi ka sakta hoon, desh mein 25,000 nai tower lag rahe hai, BSL laga rahi hai. स्वयं एम टी एन एल दिल्ली और मुंबई में 800 600 टावर लगा रही है और सुधारने की गुंजाइश है आपने राजनगर की बात कही है उसकी मैं चिंता करूंगा वहां क्यों समस्या है बट सर द लार्जर कॉन्सेप्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड नेट टूडे इज द एज ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन इंफॉर्मेशन इज पावर एंड आई सेड इज माई स्टेटमेंट ए कंट्री मोर वेल कनेक्टेड गेट्स रिफ्लेक्शन इन द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री एंड ऑल्सो द कंट्री इट Therefore, that larger concept is very clear. We have not the slightest doubt. But instead of referring to each member, let me go issue-wise the questions which have been raised. First is the question of trial. Now, I want to assure Mr. Gowda that Tri Act came in 1997. Who was in power in 1997? I will not go into it. But Section 25 is available in the Tri Act right from the day one on a question of policy the government can give directions and that is a very right decision taken by the lawmakers then a lot of concerns have been expressed about Tri I will deal with that separately but suppose a hypothetical situation honorable deputy chairman sir a particular Tri formation try to take a policy decision which is not in tune with country's needs and country's future the government must have the right to give direction as a matter of policy to intervene. By doing that, we are not compromising the independence of Tri. We are fulfilling our obligation to the people of India. That's what I would like to say. So the second question arose. So many mails being made public. Mr. Derrick O'Brien also mentioned about that. Sir, in terms of the architecture as it is in the Tri Act, they have to make all their consultation pub papers public so that responses can come. I quite see the point. The privacy issue, the email number ought to have been safeguarded, is a question to be considered. I take note of that. In my own way, I will try to convey. Honorable Raju Chandrasekhar ji, a very knowledgeable man in this field, has raised a larger issue of a public statement by Tri Chairman that this is a rivalry between a newspaper group and a telecom group. Well, normally I don't make comments, sir. But today I would like to make a comment. And I say with profound respect to the people who occupy the post of regulator. Regulators must speak their mind through their recommendations, to their report, not by public comments. Public comments certainly should be avoided. Now, a specific query has been asked of me by uh, Mr. Honorable Rajiv Chand Shekharji. In my own way, I will ask my officers to convey this concern that if a public comment has been made, whether there, any, whether there was any evidence for that or not. Thirdly, I don't know some of the members asked me, is the TRI going to be uh, reconsidered again? The TRI Act. Well, the consultation paper is on. If certain more issues are required to be addressed, we'll certainly take into account in that. So this is as far as TRI is concerned. And I want to assure this House that we don't intend to interfere or infringe upon the independence of TRI. But as a government accountable to this house and to this house to the people of India, whatever is required to be done to safeguard the interest of the people of India, the government will always exercise that power. And that power is available to us under Section 25 of the Act, I would like to assure. It is not a power, new power. So second issue was raised, are you going to come with any law about it? A lot of thing was talked about Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Tulsi, Mr. Shantaram Naik, my friend Mr. V.P. Singh. Huh? Yes, you also. You, to, you, you rose it to the great height of Article 21. Yes. Sir, today, sir, I must tell you, I have been deeply uh, given the pulse of wisdom as to what dimensions internet right can be raised to 
including as a part of right of life. I hope the people outside who are trying to limit this right must be hearing this great matter of concern. Sir, whether we need to have a law or not, that is the question of consideration. Let the, let the try come with its recommendations. I want to convey to our I, I was not sleeping. Ma no, sir, I, have a I, don't, I just yield for 10 seconds, sir. 10 seconds. I, won't, I don't want to interrupt you because you, you're on your flow. Sir, this issue of releasing 10, 10 lakh email IDs goes much beyond try or anything else. It's a question of everybody's privacy, sir. Those names have been leaked. No, I, I, I think I already explained, Honorable Mr. Derek O'Brien, that when the law requires the try to make the consultation paper public, they were following a legal course. Whether they could have infringed completely the identity, the names, the emails of the members is a matter of concern. I have already shared with you. Now, sir, do we need some kind of a legal architecture is the question that was asked. Sir, what is the norm? The norm is the TRI gives a recommendation. It comes to my department, the Ministry of Telecom Commission, where the Telecom Commission, where we have eminent members, finance secretary, telecom secretary, other secretaries, they sit and decide. Then it comes to me and finally to the cabinet, where a final decision shall be taken. Therefore, regardless of whatever TRI does, the final decision is that going to be of the government and government alone. And the government's commitment is reflected in the statement which I have said, namely, the government stands for a non-discriminatory access of internet to the entire people of India. So, but much before the tri suomoto consultation started, way back in January itself, when the whole controversy arose, I had constituted a committee of my own department officers, very senior officers, many of them are present also here, to have a very elaborate cons consultation process and give me a report on a variety of issues. So that, apart from tri's recommendations, the government has the benefit of a parallel report as well. This was a precaution I took. For that, not only one report, because net neutrality is an important question bearing upon independence of India, creativity of India, innovation of India. Therefore, the government must have two reports, so that to take a proper decision in a structured manner. They are going to give a decision uh, recommendations by this uh, month end itself, sir, that will also be there, sir. Now, do we need a legal architecture is a question asked by a lot of members. Sir, once the report comes, the report may say that the present architecture is enough. The report may indicate what are the benefits of net neutrality. They may say what are the technical architecture we need. The report may say what are the further regulatory measures we need. Therefore, allow that process to be completed. We have, let me, let me very often say, sir, with my legal experience, sir, we have got a proper licensing conditions when we give to any license to any telecom service operator. Terms and conditions are mentioned in the license itself. Suppose, it is purely hypothetical, I am not giving my final view. Suppose the government comes with a structured guideline laying down the principles of net neutrality it can make that guideline as a part of licensing condition itself. It is only a hypothetical proposition which I am saying. But all these options are open. When the government is committed, sir, and when through this very eloquent and, uh, I must say, encouraging discussions of this house, the entire approach is going on, I think they will surely consider that the government, the people of India, and the parliament are speaking in one voice. How I see the larger spectrum which I made my initial comments, sir. In my initial comments, sir, I had made certain comments about how internet has grown in India, how mobile phones have grown in India. And when I am saying that, sir, let me say one thing, sir. This great growth of IT sector, this great growth of IT enabled services, this extraordinary phenomena of mobile explosion in India has happened without the government, in many cases, in spite of the government. I don't want to go beyond that. But the people of India have an extraordinary appetite to accept technology. And sir, the, for me, sir, the defining moment is when I go to the airport, I see an elderly lady, not very literate, using her mobile phone 
to show her pin number for his uh, for her air ticket sir this is how they are today 40% of indian railways tickets are e tickets sir the world is changing no one can reverse this process when i see the sir and i must tell you sir i have been following these products myself not in a very uh, substantial manner but after becoming the it minister of india communication minister of india the kind of new horizons the kind of self confidence the kind of innovative spirit which is coming to india and today on, while speaking this august house sir i want to inform this house so many young entrepreneurs 30 years 28 years are coming from silicon valley to bangalore to delhi to make a make mark in india so that india become a digitally more powerful society if that is the future awaiting us sir surely it will come with the premise of a non discriminatory internet regime that is the fundamental issue we all need to understand sir i want to assure this house sir that there is spirit their concerns have been properly noted net neutrality is party neutral yeah. net neutrality is ideology neutral and i am sure derek o'brien and ravi shankar prasad regardless of the political divide are standing on the same pages and we don't mind taking dr mr raja also with some marxian uh, polishing and embellishment there is still talking about net neutrality so yeah. i'm deeply grateful for the very insightful yeah, yeah. debate sir and we will continue to march forward thank you sir uh, thank you very much no 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 it's very clear no need of any more clarification honorable minister is very clear very clear on net neutrality what is the no no kyo no 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 i am not allowing announcement by the chair no no you are not given name sir no no because your name is taken you can say one sentence ah because your name yes because your name is taken उस टाइम मेरे भाई हैं उन्हें सरकास्टिक तरीके से मेरा जिक्र किया है न्यूट्रिलिटी पे मैं ना बोलना हूं उनको आश्चर्य हुआ है इसलिए सर ये मेरा प्रोटेस्ट है नो नो जब तक जरूर न्यूट्रल रहे इसलिए बोला सर जब तक ये कॉर्पोरेट में एग्रीकल्चर के बीच में न्यूट्रल नहीं होंगे मैं इस पर नहीं बोलूंगा ओके थैंक यू ओके दैट्स गुड